So we've looked at positional encodings, done with that part. Uh, you understand, um, it, well, you understand positional encodings now, you understand self-attention, but there's one little part in self-attention which we haven't talked about, and that is this, this part which says multi-head. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about now. I actually started with this example when we explained self-attention, where I say you have an input sequence here, and what you're doing is you're projecting each of them to a key and a value, a key and a value, and also a query, sorry, key value query, key value query, key value query, and so on. And then what you do is you take the dot product of your query with each of the keys, that gives you a score, softmax, that gives you a weight, you take the weighted average of your values, and that's what pops out of your self-attention block. Okay? Now that is what we call single head um, self-attention. What I said was this single head that we have could maybe incorporate a, uh, or could maybe learn something like the syntactic relationship between words. And what that means is like, so we've got the query for the word learn here, and we're taking in the dot product with everything else. And learn is semantically related to school. Okay? So in this hypothetical example, and it is just a hypothetical example, you might get large scores on um, position 6 and position 4 if you have the query, um, this particular query. Another model, let's say I re-ran it, or maybe it's a different problem or something else has changed, might say, no, I don't care about whether things are semantically related, I actually care about syntax. Whether things are verbs or subject, or which verbs relates to which subjects, and so on. And that model might say, no, I'm not encoding se semantics. When I calculate my query for position 6, and I take the dot product with all of the, the keys, then I'm going to put weight on, on words that are syntactically related to learn. So who's learning in this sentence? I am. Okay, so I might put a very large weight on, on that noun that goes with, with the verb learn. That's another model. Now the idea behind multi-head attention is we're going to stack these heads on top of each other. Okay, we won't know what they learn. This, that's really important. This is a hypothetical example. We won't know what they learn, but we're going to stack blocks like these on top of each other to give the model the capacity to learn to look at different things. Okay. Remember, we're just taking the dot product of one thing with, with, with some other thing, right? That's one number, and that limits the capacity of what the model can actually look at. Okay. So we're going to stack these heads on top of each other. The first head is going to have a unique, um, a unique matrix for your keys, a unique matrix for your queries, a unique matrix for your values. You're going to have a WQ for your first head, you're going to have a WV for your first head, and you're going to have a WK for your first head. And so these keys and values will be unique to this head. And they will be different from these keys and values in this head. So here, this head will have a WQ2, a WV2, a WK2. And I've, for some reason, scribbled it in with the Qs, but not with the others. But each of these will actually also have a little superscript in blocks 2. And this one, superscript in blocks 1. So they will be unique to that specific head. And we're going to stack the edge tunk, 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 on top of each other. Does that make sense? So, uh, Liana Voita's blog, which I also relied on very heavily for these lectures, she has a really nice video of this, which I'm just going to um, play for you. So this is really nice. So this is head one, that's head two, head three, head four. Each of them have different weights. Boom, you get all the outputs. You pass that through a, a little linear layer and that gives you the output of the multi-head attention block. So you will obviously see that the softmax weights change at every, at every, for each of the heads because each head is looking at different stuff for that particular um, input. Then you concatenate them pass them through a, a little matrix and that gives you the output at that time step. So the first time I saw multi-head stuff I was also really confused but it, it, um, if you understand convolutional neural networks and you know about filters and kernels then that analogy applies exactly here. So it's exactly like having a different kernel to look at specific stuff in an image except here we're looking at different stuff in a sequence. So 
we've solved, uh, we've done self-attention, we've done multi-ed self-attention, we've done positional encodings as well. So what else do we need to understand this um, transformer model? Um, we're next going to look at the word masked. Okay, 